Okay, so welcome back to another video on this joint. And on this take, we need to talk about the XO. So this is going to, to be a complete guide. It's not me making a review. It's not me making some beats with this plugin. It's a complete deep dive to this plugin. And I'm actually answering to uh, a request. I asked the subscribers of this channel, which plugin, uh, you know, would you like me to cover? And this one won by, you know, 40% or something like that. So what I'm going to do is just that just cover every single aspect of this plugging now of course this is a monster it can do a million things so it's not going to be a short video right it's not a it's not a, a short kind of a you know kind of a thing it has a lot of things so everything's time coded everything is divided in sections so you can navigate through the different sections and maybe you can watch some you know something today and maybe you watch the uh, you know some other part to, tomorrow i want i want you to use this video as a guide right when you when you're lost or maybe you don't know how to do something you just come here you look at the timeline and you look at the you know the time codes the chapters and then you just watch it okay so let's just begin so the first thing that you get when you open the uh, software is all of this so this is going to be this space and you have different places so they have the space the edit and you know within this sample combiner the beat combiner all the presets and everything else but the main thing is this space so this is the representation of all the samples uh, the samples that you have uh, available uh, to select and this again it's called the space so of course what you can do you can with the mouse you can scroll and you can go zoom or zoom in or zoom out or whenever you click, right click, you can navigate, you know, from left to right. If I go there and I'm a little, little bit lost, I can just go and move right there. So you also have the options right here at the bottom to zoom in and zoom out. And if you're lost, you can just always go back to this default view. So this thing comes with a lot of uh, samples included, factory samples, but you can make, you can uh, put your own samples. So the way of the way of doing this is by going to this option. You can see the directory right here, and notice that you can drag and drop your folders. You can go to your Windows or your uh, Finder, and you just drop whatever folder with samplers uh, with samples. And XO will just you know analyze everything behind the scenes, and it will just add categories and categorize everything. This is what it does behind the scenes. And as you can notice, you you know you you uh, I have a lot of things going on right here, a lot of uh, a lot of samples. You know, from different developers and you know but one thing that it's consistent and one thing that you cannot delete is the xo core content right but again you can just drag and drop and whenever you do that that the uh, xo will do uh, an, an analysis of all the sounds you have right there and it will just put them on different places now one thing that's very important is the organization that you have right here so notice that some things are red, some things are yellow, and there is a logic to this. We're going to discuss it in a minute. For example, if I go to the kicks, the kicks are going to be red. And now maybe you're thinking, okay, so he's throwing all the kicks right here. Well, not really. If I go at the top, notice that the kicks are a bit thin. And if I go at the bottom, it's more subby. If I go to the left, the kicks are, you know, they have less high content, you know, high frequencies. And if I go to the right, they have more high frequencies. You know, they have a tail. So everything is just organized like that. It's not just randomly, it's randomly placed right here. Since you can add your own libraries, this is going to be a bit of a mess because now you have a million files, uh, literally 37,000 right here. I, you know, I have right now loaded on, on XO. And it's quite a lot. So if you want to create some sound, it's just a bit annoying going through all of them because you have a lot. So you have a way of making all of this uh, much, much easier. And this is going to be the search icon right here. I'm going to go right there and you have the search and filter. Now, if I turn it off, notice that you have some options right here that are grayed out. And it's because by default, this is doing a little bit of filtering to all the samples I have loaded because some samples are just not very drum drum material. For example, if I turn it off, notice it's showing something at the bottom. These samples are more... are more like that, you know? They are just not the, that kind of samples. So th that's why it's doing a little bit of filtering. Now, of course, all of this 
has a purpose and it's really, really useful. Of course, you can type something and search by the name of the sample. You can also do it right here if you must. But, you know, I'm going to go over there. And you can search by different categories because behind the scenes, whenever it loads, it's going to read the sample, uh, not analyze it, and categorize the sample. So if you click the kick, all the red ones are the, you know, just the kicks, right? Pretty understandable. If you're going to go to the snare, you can go right there and just search for a snare without, you know, all the, all the confusion you have right here. But the claps are going to be this color, then you get the closed hi-hats, then you get the open hi-hats, which are going to be green, and then you have symbols, and the symbols are going to be uh, kind of a pink kind of a color, then you have toms, which are going to be kind of a, that color, and then you have percussive elements, and then you have effects, which effects are just, you know, this sound. Now, notice that right here, you do have some kind of a configuration uh, uh, on, on this ones. Notice that you get the kick one, kick two, snare, clap, hi-hat, and then you have flex. So by default, you can have the kicks, the snare, the clap, the close hi-hat, and the open uh, hi-hat. And this is just all of this we have right here. The other ones, the flex ones, are kind of a flexible kind of a sounds. We can put whatever we want. It could be an effects. It could be a percussion. It could be a symbol. It could be whatever other thing. That's why it's called flex. And you get just two. You can search or kind of a filter uh, the results by doing something like this. By main frequency, by length, or by, by drumminess. So let's, for now, go to the kick, because, you know, it's just a bit easier to see. So the main frequency is going to be what is the fundamental frequency of the kick. If I go and chop, start chopping, you know, the high frequencies is going to start removing the kicks that have, you know, high content material, like, like uh, you know, maybe a part of the snare, or maybe a hat or something like that. And notice that it's removing this side of the kicks, and it's keeping this ones. It's because these ones are just more... You know, they sound like a kick without a lot of the, uh, you know, the other things at the top. If I do the other thing, it's going to keep the ones that high, have high frequencies included. Notice, right? This is how you can filter by the main frequency. Maybe you need a snare and you need to, uh, you know, you, you need a snare that has a lot of high frequency. So maybe you just can do something like this and there you go. You know, much easier to work with instead of just having everything. So then you have the length. The length uh, works pretty much the same way. If I go there and start chopping, notice that it's in milliseconds. It's time-based. If I start chopping and making it smaller, it's going to start showing me the samples that are just, you know, shorter. And for now, it's just going to show me the ones that are not sub because we don't have a tail, you know? So they're very short samples. If I go the other way, it's going to give me, you know, the long ones. That's a long one. So, yeah. So you can, of course, uh, filter by length. Then you have the drumminess. And this one's just a, a bit special. So if I do everything, remember, it's filtering the ones that uh, are not very kind of a percussive uh, material. Or they don't sound very percussive. So you can make this uh, search, this filter, a bit more narrow. Let's say I want to filter more, and I keep, I'm going to keep filtering and filtering and filtering and just remove all the, uh, all the sounds that are not very, you know, drum material. And I'm just going to notice that I'm keeping the ones we have at the top, the ones right here. If I go the other way, I'm just going to start keeping, you know, the ones that sound like maybe a synth or an effects or something else. I, I can't see. Right? So, yeah. I can see. So, okay. So, you can filter by this, by category, by tag, or you can filter by doing this. You can even filter by time, like this. But the most important thing is that you can filter by folders. Remember, I've added a lot of, uh, I've added a lot of samples. So, maybe you don't want to use all of them, because some of them, maybe, let's say I'm working with the Synthwave track. I don't want to load an EDM kind of a pack. So, what you can do, you just can... Uh, say none in this case, and I'm, I don't know, I'm going to go to Vinger Shakers. This is uh, maybe something, a sampler. Uh, yeah, it's actually a synthwave. This Vinger Shakers is a, is a directory that contains a lot of synthwave material. It's going to just show me that, and you just can, you know, pick and choose uh, whatever it is that you want, and it's just going to show you right here without all the, you know, the other content. 
And the same thing for the other thing. Maybe you want just the core content that comes with the XO. You just can go and, you know, just select that one. Now, one thing that is very important is that when you are working with samples that are not from the core content, what you can do, you can see uh, right here, you have a directory. Let's say I select this one, right? Go to that one. And you click right here, it's going to open the containing directory. It's going to just open the Finder or Windows Explorer and show you where that sample is, which is something very, very useful. So another thing that you can do, and for now, let me just, you know, uh, go maybe to co the core content. So you can do the favorites one. Now, if I click on favorites, it's going to show me the favorites and I don't have favorites right now, uh, but it's showing this ones. So this ones right now are showing uh, the ones are, that are selected right here. And it's because by default, when you select, uh, when you open XO, it's going to load this patch. So maybe I don't want to do this. I want to start with a clean uh, init patch. So for now, I'm just going to go right there and I'm going to just close this and just, you know, go there and let me just reset the filter. I'm going to close it and I'm going to do something like creating my own patch. I don't want all of this content preloaded. I don't want to start from the scratch. So I go here and whenever you go to core content, you can uh, search and actually I'm searching for something right here. Let me just delete it. You go all the way to the top and you have an init patch. And this is again, all inside the core content. You cannot modify this one. So whenever I hit uh, init, I load it, make sure you click the check and there you go. You have no sample selected. If I just, you know, do something, nothing happens. So we're going to create everything from the scratch right here. So what I want to do, I want to uh, save some sounds as, as favorites. So let's say that. I like that kick, all right? So I'm gonna save it as a favorite. I'm gonna go that, I like that one, I like that one, and I like that one. So whenever you go here, you just click favorites, and it's just gonna show you the ones you favorite, you know, which is this one, this one, this one, and this one. And everything else is just not clickable, right? It's just showing your favorites. Pretty easy to understand. So, okay, so right here at the bottom, you have the similarity uh, bar. If I click there, it's going to show me uh, similar kicks. So maybe I'm, you know, I don't take this one and I can just you know, navigate through this var and notice that all the kicks are around the first one, the first one we selected. And it's because they're similar. Right. And you can just keep going and going and going and going and going. Now, of course, at the end of the day, you started from a, a kick that you selected. So by clicking here, you will always go back to the main kick that you selected, but you can still, you know, just change it then and go back. Now notice uh, again that you can favorite, of course, but if I do something like this and move, notice that weird kind of a line that it's kind of a following me. So, okay. So let me just show you what this is and it's super useful. I'm going to do something like this. I know it makes no sense. I'm just making a circle. So what this is, is the history. So when I click here, notice that it will show me the history of all the uh, different sounds I've selected and I just can navigate through uh, that history. Of course, it's not that long, but you know, that's what that line means. So maybe you were just, you know, navigating some sounds and you went there and maybe there and maybe there and you say, oh, you know what? I like the one right here and I just clicked it. Of course, you can go back. That, that was the one, right? So the history is just very important. Okay, so of course, all this, um, everything that we are doing is to add samples right here and create our own sounds. How can we add samples? So notice you have the arrows right here, and every time you select a sample, you will have a color. It de depends on whatever you're, you're selecting. So if I go and maybe just do a kick, maybe I like that one, I'm just going to go to whatever slot I want to put it, and I'm just going to go there and put it there. And now is part of the patch. Let's do a kick number two. I'm gonna go something more kind of a lower, maybe that one. I'm gonna load it on the number two. We have snares. Remember, we can use the filters. The snare is gonna be the, this one. So maybe I want something like that. I'm gonna put the snare. Then maybe I want to cla a clap. Remember, we can filter. We can go there and do the clap. Or maybe let's say I like that one. I want the hats. I like that one. 
And I'm just kind of a randomly uh, selecting files right now. And I'm just going to pick that one. And then we have the flex ones. So for now, I'm just going to maybe go and select the percussive element. Something like that. That's too long. Yeah, I don't like that one. And maybe right here, I'm going to be putting an effects. And I'm going to select something. Holy shit, something <laughs> long. Right? So I'm going to go and put that one. And I'm going to show you why in a minute. So, okay, so now our kit, our kit is complete, right? And then the long one. All right, so that's it. That's how you do it. Now, my uh, advice for you is whenever you're done doing this, you save the patch. Because if you make a mistake and you change something of this, you just cannot go back. You just cannot go back. For example, and I'm not going to do it, but I'm just giving you an example recommend you not, not to do it. If I go to the core content and my mistake, I click on some of this options, some of the, you know, the default patches that they give us, uh, I'm going to lose everything and just, just not, cannot get it back. I'm going to need to start over. So it's always a good idea to save the patch whenever you're done. Now notice that the right, you have something called the short list. So let's say that maybe I like this sounds, but maybe I, you know, once uh, just clicked on this one and I like this one as well, all right? So this one can be added to the short list. So it doesn't matter if you keep changing sounds right here, this one will always be on the short list because maybe later you just want to try this one or you want to use it. So you can add whatever you want to the short list and then just come back to this. So this is like a, a temporary uh, favorite kind of a section, right? So you got your your files right here. So later, maybe you want to go back to this ones and just use them. Now, of course, if you want to delete one of them, you just select this and just kaboom. It's not there anymore. All right. So, so far we know how to navigate, how to do the filter, how to add the samples, how to load them. Uh, so now we need to start, you know, making beats, how to use everything else we have at disposal right here. So first I'm going to be saving whatever we did right here as a user patch. Again, this is my recommendation. Whenever you're done doing whatever it is that you want to do, always save it as something. So whenever you hit save, you can pick a random name for this one. So this one is more cap, whatever, and I'm going to be saving this. So once you save it, it's going to be stored uh, under the user uh, kind of, a, you know, files or, you know, presets. And what you can do as well, you can create a playlist and then just maybe put that, uh, you know, that on that playlist. Let's say I'm creating a kit for Synthwave or maybe EDM. So you can create your own playlist and then just put them right there. But everything it's under the user category whenever you create a patch. Okay, so we are doing this patch. Cool. All right, so we have everything in place to start creating a beat and everything works with sequences uh, right here. So we need to use a sequencer. Yeah, that, that's how, how it works. So you have several ways. The main, uh, if you select a sample right here, notice that you have some options right here at the bottom. So this is what you're going to be using to create a sequence. For, but this one works alone for the kick, or maybe this one works alone for the snare. Now, I don't want to do, you do this uh, because I'm going to show you the other way. And it's actually the same thing. We get the same thing. So I'm going to go over there. So whenever you go to edit, you have pretty much two uh, different things. You have this section, which is the edit section. And then you have something called beat combiner, something like that. And then you have something called sample combiner. We're going to talk about this uh, a bit later. So this is going to be controlling this side, not the beat combiner. This side is going to be controlling this sample, how long it is the pitch, the panning, and every uh, and everything else. So then you have this one, which is going to be the sequence. Now, what you can do, and now notice that everything is locked. So it doesn't matter what I do. If I do some playing, nothing is going to happen. So what you can do, you can unlock this one, and you can manually start adding patterns to this. Right? It's very simple, very simple, very straightforward. Now, whenever you add a full, uh, you click it, you're going to be adding a full velocity. Notice it's full, but maybe, you know, right here, I want to do with the other kick and I want to do something like that. And what if you go down, the velocity, of course, is going to change. 
So you have this way of doing things, but you also get something called the beat combiner. So when you go there, you will have this, uh, whatever you did right here, if you save it, you know, sometimes you need to save it, uh, you will have it uh, as an original beat right here, what you did right here. And it's because if you change this with this options you get right here, you can always go back, right? You can always go back. Now, if you don't want to change it, remember that you can lock all of this. So you make sure that you don't change it by mistake. But, you know, you can do, uh, you can do different things. You can do some exploration. And this is actually something really, really great. I can do something like this. Or maybe I can do something like that. And then maybe do some playing. Let's go to the snare. And I want to do something, I don't know. No, Heidi, how easy this is. I'm going to go to this one. And this is the clap. So maybe I don't want to use it. Put it on the same play as the snare. Maybe I'm going to... I think it's too much. Uh, let's see this one. I like that one. But is it just a little bit too aggressive? So I'm going to just lower the volume. Right here, you can control the volumes. You can control the, if, you know, if you can solo this one or mute it. Let's go to the hi-hats. Now, notice that every single element, because everything is categorized, will have its own, you know, its own thing. It will do its own thing. Notice if I go right here, you don't get this one on all the other ones. I like that one. I'm going to go to the open hi-hat, and then I'm going to do something like... Okay. And there you go. You just can use the beat combiner just to create different sounds. I'm going to unlock this one and I'm not going to use the flex. I'm just bringing a very long sample uh, just to show you something later. And that's it. You just can, you know, go right here. Now, remember, of course, that you can change the velocities right here. By just drag, clicking and dragging. And that's it. Now, of course, once you're done, you can click right here. And then if you want to change it later, you just can come back and you have the original here. So if you make a mistake or maybe you want to try different things, you can change them, but you can always go back to what you did before. But always remember to click the check mark icon. If you click this one, your work gets lost. Another thing that you can do Notice that you have a hand right here at the bottom. You can just go to empty or go back to whatever you had from before. Or maybe just try different variations of this. And notice that this three are basic patterns and the other ones are just more complex. And if you want to go back to the original, just go back. So let's say I want to make a, a fill, you know, I'm just Maybe I want to do a bridge. Let's say I want to do a bridge. And there you go, you have a bridge. It's that, it's that simple. And once I'm done, I'm going to go back to what, you know, I had from before. Pretty simple. You can still do a random. So this is just going to create a random pattern for you. It's just great. It's just a great plugin. A very creative plugin. So I can keep doing this forever. So I'm gonna go and just select what we had from before. I'm just gonna do something like that and stop the playback. Okay, so that was the beat combiner. And this we use this on a creative way just to create different beats. Although you can do it manually just like we discussed previously. Now, do you have a different thing which is gonna be the sample combiner? And this is pretty much the same idea, but this works with the different samples. I'm gonna do the playing again. So let's say I don't like this kick. So I can go right here and just change it. Maybe I'm going to solo so it's a bit obvious. And now it's going to use that one instead of just using something else. Now, if you think about if you think about this and you're saying, dude, this is the same thing we had 
from, you know, on the space right here with the similarity? Yes, it is. Now, the thing is that you can, of course, lock it and you have a different option right here, which is changing everything. So right now, this is our main kind of a, you know, the main sounds we are loading. But I can just click here and just change to some other similar sounds. And I'm changing all the dis all the sounds at once. Now all of the, all, all the samples selected right here are being selected by XO by similarity, of course. Now remember that you can always go back to the original one, or you can even do some random and see what happens. Now this is a great plugin just to you know to get a little bit of exploration. Maybe you don't know what you want, and you just you know. You just go navigate, you do a little bit of fooling around and you always get, you know, get, get, you know, always get something out of this. Now, so this is the sample combiner, right? So you can just, again, select different ones or maybe just go back to the original one. Notice that right here at the bottom, you do have something very similar. For now, I'm just gonna click that one. So notice if I go to the space, you have it right here, and if I gonna, I'm gonna save the uh, plugin. I'm gonna just, you know, save that one, and I go right here. Notice that this is gonna show you where the original samples are, and what's the progression. You know, what what are the uh, the sequences, the steps that you're doing. But also, again, it will show you and it will create some similar examples or just some some similar samples. There's different variations of your same kit. You can change them from here, you can change them from here, but always you can go back to the original one. Now remember again, this it's equal pretty much to doing something like this, but it's of course a bit more a bit more uh, complete and a bit more complex and you can even do some something random. On this one is everything is just kind of a, you know, moving it one step up or one step down. And notice I'm clicking here, right? And always go back to your default one. Another thing that you can do, you can just lock sounds that you don't want. Maybe you like this one, you like that one, you like that one, and you like, uh, you know, that one. But you just, you know, maybe you don't like the other ones. So you can just random and just try to get something else. So notice that you have something called live filter. And this is actually the filter that we already discussed. So this is gonna open the filter. So this one will, of course, whenever you change the settings, it will show you different samples because it's going to filter the ones that you don't want. And it happens, you know, as you actually do, do it. I'm gonna maybe, I don't know, select maybe none. And I'm gonna go all. Uh, maybe not, and then just do uh, bingo shakers. This is the main one. So I'm gonna go and do random. And maybe I just gonna go, and then this is just changing behind the scenes. Now I don't want that, I'm just gonna go back to my default content. Right? Okay, so for now I'm just gonna unlock everything. And hopefully you understood all of this, it's just pretty simple. And it takes a little while, you know, before you can just adjust your workflow to this. Right, so let's deep dive into the hardcore stuff of this plugin, which is going to be this section, this section right here, and this section at the bottom, right? So first, we're going to start with this one because it's the easy one. So right now, if I do play, we are playing the A, which is going to be this progression. We have 16 steps, and this is what we are playing. But maybe I just want to extend this to a B. If I click on B, everything is going to be kind of a copy. Not that much, but you know, kind of a... No, notice it says cloned. And this is... So we can have a variation of an A or a B. Maybe on the B I want something else. And you know what? I'm just going to go and do something like that just you know something random so i can do it fast because this video is just long enough something like that right so that's the b if i go to a we play the a if i go to b we play the b very simple 
but what you can do you can chain them you can play an a and then play the b and notice that we cannot see it changing from the a to the b and this is because you need to enable the follow so the follow is just gonna you know take it to the b when you're on the b or take it to the a when you're on the a and right here you have a progression right here you can see it right there now you can as well instead of having just an a b you can do three bars of a and then the b is like you know the last bar and there you go so that's what this section is pretty simple okay so i'm gonna i'm just gonna for now i'm just gonna say off and i'm just gonna keep on the a right so i want to talk about this swing So for now, I'm going to select the close hi-hat, which is this one. And I'm just going to do something silly like this, right? I'm just going to just go and just add something there, right? This is this that what we're going to get, which is pretty silly, okay? That's fine. So what we need to do, what we want to do right here is to, to use the shuffle and the swing. And you have different modes. Just to, to enable this, you're going to need to, of course, click right here and it will just enable the swing. Now, by default, uh, just enabling this is just not going to do anything. You just need to go and increase the intensity. And now you, of course, you're doing a swing of 16, 116. Of course, you can do some other things right here. You have different times. For example, swing 8 is going to sound a little bit different if you have a 16. But maybe you have an 8 step, you know, 1, 8. It's just going to sound a little bit more swingy. But you have all the, cho all the choices. And you know, in the in context, this is... It's gonna really make a change. Now, as well, what you can do, you can nudge the timing. So for now, I'm just gonna go and, you know, move this and turn it off. And notice that when I turn it on, unless you turn this on, this is the one that it's lighting up. But then what you can do is you can nudge uh, you can nudge the timing. So right now we just don't realize what's going on, but it will do it. We will do it will offset the timing of whatever it is that we are doing. So notice this is not in tempo. If I rush it, we are nudging it. And we can still do a swing and nudge the timing as well. We can do both at the same time. Now right now we are doing this on a single, you know, on a single one, a single sound, single sample, or sequencer, lane, a single lane. Now, if I turn this off, of course, we're going to go back to what we had from before. Now, the nudge is going to be for each lane, but the swing, you can apply it and do it for pretty much the whole track, or the, you know, the whole kit. Right here at the bottom, you can say set all, and it's going to give you the option to enable swing for all of them. But as well, you have the global control right here. Notice that if I move it, I'm going to be doing set all. And I'm going to do this. And it's just not doing anything. It's because I need to click right here. And notice that everything is going on a swing kind of a motion. Now, we don't have a lot of 16s. So let me just add more 16s. Maybe change it to 8. And there you go. So instead of doing it individually, you're going to be doing it for all. That's pretty much what it means. You, with, right here, you can disable that global. And you're just going to do it individually. Even though everything is enabled, you're just doing a, we are just doing a swing to the close hi-hats. Not to the other ones. To the global, right now, it's just not going to apply. Now this button, again, will just disable and enable all at the same time. Pretty easy stuff. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the beat combiner because this is just a bit messy right now. Let me just change it to something else. And I'm going to maybe do something like that. Right, so let me just go back to here and I'm going to do the same example than before. Right? I just want something dumb and I'm just going to improve it. So now we're going to talk about the accentuator, but also whenever you uh, 
do something right here, you uh, add a step. You cannot just you can add, of course, the velocity, change the velocity, but you can also notice that you have a dot right here. And this, what it will do, it will just trigger the same sample a certain amount of times. So if I do two, it's going to do it twice. And if I want three, it's going to do it three or four. So you can do up to four. You can do two, three, and four. And this is completely up to you, you know, it depends on what you want to do. Depends on your style, depends on the, gen on the genre that you're working with. And again, this will affect the whole track. In this case, I don't want anything, so by just clicking it, it's just, you know, it's going to remove it. Okay, so let's talk about the accentuator. Now, right now, the only motion that we have right here is just, you know, a single motion. We don't have accents. So, it's very linear. If I play it, it's just like that. But you can go and enable the accentuator, and this is going to be applying it pretty much on the whole, on all the lanes. But, in this case, I just want to do it on this one. So, what you need to do is just click the, this, and just click this, and the accentuator will only work on the hi-hats. So, again, what this does, it will give you a little bit of accent to whatever you have right here. So maybe I'm going to do one four, and right here it will show you what is going to go, which step goes up in volume and which steps are going to go down in volume. So you're getting an accent on the one four. Maybe you want to one six. It's going to sound a little bit different, of course. Or maybe you want to one eight. Now maybe you, let's say that you, instead of... Uh, Let's go to the one four. It's going to be easier to just hear. Let's say that you don't want to boost. You don't want the accent on this one. You want the accent on this one. So going the other way, because this is bipolar, it's just going to kind of flip it. And at the end of the day, if you don't like this, you just can turn it off and just keep what we have. But if you think about this, this is pretty, you know, pretty dull. This is just going to make it a little bit better. Again, at the end of the day, it depends on what you want to do. And you can even randomize this just to get different variations. Right, so that's what the accentuator is going to do, is just add, adding accents. Now, remember that the, if you enable this, it's going to do it to all the tracks that are, you know, uh, enabled. So, yeah, be careful with that. Notice going up in volume in some parts that I don't really like. So be careful uh, when you do this. Just make sure that you select the tracks that you want to accentuate. Or maybe you want to do all. It's completely up to you. All right. So let's talk about what we have right here. All the options we have right here. So of course, these are samples, right? We are working with samples. So what we can do, we can modify the samples, we can use effects on the samples, we can change the pitch, we can change the panning, we can change the tone, and even the velocity of the sample. And if you click right here, it's going to take you to the sample kind of a viewer. So right now, this is going to be the kick. So I'm going to go and do some playing, right? So this is my kick. So maybe the sample, I like it, but it's just too long. So you can do a little bit of fade in. And it's going to chop the initial transient. And ever, whenever you change the default sound, it will show, it will give you this kind of a, this symbol right here. And this means that you change the default one. Notice when I change it, it's showing right there. So you can even make it, of course, maybe you have a long sample in just one part of this. And this again works just like a sampler. Maybe the sample is just too long. So maybe I just want to make it short and fade it out, something like that. You can even search it. You can, uh, you know, uh, favorite search the sample. You can do, uh, you can swap the left and the right, and you can even mono it or change the face, right? Pretty simple. Now, if you move the, move it right here, because what you can do, and let me just show you, you can, of course, scroll and see in depth whatever it is that you're doing, and maybe you're going to get a little bit lost. So this one will always take you to the start. Right. 
pretty easy. It's just like a sampler, a very basic sampler, but it's just enough. Okay. So you can edit the samples. And right now it's showing, it's telling me that maybe I changed something. I don't know what I've really changed. Ah, there we go. So, okay. So then you have the other side of things, which is going to be uh, the pan. You have the envelope and you have the pitch. And for this one, I'm going to do, I'm going to do this one, maybe. So of course the pan is going to be all the way to the left, all the way to the right. I believe I don't need to do a lot of explaining on that one. It's pretty obvious. And then right here, you have something called a has effect. So if you have a mono sound, what you can do, you can offset the left speaker and the right speaker. You know, you can just, you know, we have a stereo sound, a mono sound, and it goes on your left and to your right. If it's mono, it's because it's the same on both speakers. But what you can do, you can offset the timing and push it back a few milliseconds on the right speaker or the left speaker. And this one will make the sound a little bit wider. So what, what this does is going to create a has effect. So now again, the right channel is delayed slightly for a wider sound. You have the description right here. Or you can go the other way. Depends on the, whatever you want to do. Right? Pretty simple. So then, let's say that this snare is just a bit too much. So you have a transient control. You just can go here. You can make it shorter with the decay. If you have a... Maybe this... Right now we don't have a sustained sound. If it's too sustained, you can change right here. This is the whole time. And again, this works just like a, maybe an ADSR or maybe it's just a transient designer. It's just an envelope. Or maybe you can add a little bit of punch. That's why I'm telling you it works like a transient designer. And maybe you want it's too, maybe it's too aggressive, it's too punchy. You could just make it smoother. So then you have the pitch. Now, of course, you can go right here and tune the pit, the snare by semitones. Go there, or maybe you can go up. Again, pretty simple. I feel like I don't need to explain it. So right here, you have something very special. Now, it says, if I hover on this one, it's going to say stereo pitch offset. This one works just like the panning. It's going to say left side is pitched up and right side is pitched down. So this works the same way that the has effect. Whenever something in the left, you know, we have the same sound and something in the left sounds a little bit different than the sound in the, in the right, uh, on the right speaker, it's going to create this, you know, perception perception of wideness, of, you know, width. So this one is doing it with the pitch. The other one is doing with time. So it's just the same idea. But, you know, with pitch or with time. Then you have the tonality. And this is like, a, it's a tilt cue. Uh, maybe uh, I'm going to use something else. Maybe not that one. Okay, I'm going to like that one. So... The tonality, uh, maybe, oh, let's, just, let's just go back to the snare. Now, the tonality, it's a tilt EQ. So if I go all the way to here, it's going to kind of a, uh, do a, use a curve and it will boost the high frequencies, but at the same time, it will lower the lower frequencies, the low frequencies. And if I go the other way, it's going to boost the low frequencies and cut the high frequencies. That's why it's a tilt EQ. That's why, you know, we, we don't get the high frequency. We just get the, you know, the very low part. This is a tilt cue. Now, then you have the cut. So this is a filter. Let's say that the snare is just too bright. We have too much high frequencies. You just can cut from the highs or maybe you can cut from the bottom. And this is something that, you know, might be very useful with this one. Maybe it's just too bright. So I'm just going to be cutting a little bit of the highs and make it less annoying. Same with this one. Fine. Pretty simple. So then you have the velocity. Of course, depends on what you're doing. You can go full velocity or just lower the velocity on this one. And this is, again, ve the velocity sensitivity. And right now, everything is just, you know, super hyped, so it's not going to do much. But if I do something like that, notice... Is very low. If I go up, is much more sensitive.
But it's, hopefully you can you know you can hear the difference. If I go up, it's much more sensitive. So of course this one, uh, it's you know it's just a little bit lower. Now if I go all the other way, it doesn't matter what I do right here with the velocity. Everything is going to be one twenty seven. It's going to be maxed. Right. So we're going to talk about this the playback modes in a few minutes because uh, I need a I need the right example for this one. For now, we're going to go and talk about this, the effect sense. All right, so let's talk about the effect sense. And uh, we need to cover as well, we need to talk about the kit, the master, and, you know, how everything works, uh, just to get the sound out of this. So, okay, so, of course, you get some effect sense. And you get two different types of effects. Now, you don't get crazy effects, right? You just get uh, a little reverb, different types of reverbs, and you get different types of delays. Right? It's just pretty simple. So I'm gonna go right now and maybe do a snare, and I'm maybe gonna do something like that. One, you know, something like that. I'm just gonna play it. All right. So you have two places to send it: the send one or the send two. So maybe I want to do a little bit of delay on the first one. Just I'm gonna go select maybe an eight note, and I'm gonna be sending it to the number one. And there you go. You get a delay. Pretty easy stuff. So maybe I also want a little bit of reverb so I can send it to the number two. Maybe I'm gonna do a bright plate. Now you can do the same thing with anything right here. Maybe the hi-hats, I will love a little bit of reverb. Same thing with, the, with this one. Maybe this is just too much. There you go, just, just sending the effects. Now, the effects, of course, you have very limited effects, right? You, you don't get crazy, you don't go crazy right here. Now, you can do, you can still use your DAW uh, plugins, and I'm going to show you how that works in a few minutes. Now, each, uh, each delay and each reverb, you can change the length, and I'm going to go and show you with the reverb. You can change the length of the reverb, it's going to be much shorter, or just super long, right? The tonality is just like the tilt EQ we had right here. It's just gonna boost the highs or just gonna boost the lows and cut the highs. Or lower the highs, not cut it. And then the level control is gonna be, of course, of course, the level, how loud it's gonna be. All right. So, very easy stuff, I'm sorry for that. So, very easy stuff. Now, let's say I don't want to do it by, you know, one by one to send, to do the sending. I want to do it in a more global way, right? I just want to play my whole thing. And I'm going to add a little bit of accent to this one. I'm going to just do it in this one. Okay. So, uh, what I want to do, I don't want to do it by track, by lane. I want to do it in a more global way. So, right here, you get the kit globals. So you can go up in volume with the whole kit, which is going to be useful in a second. You can change the pitch of the whole kit. Or you can do the sending. So you're going to send everything to the delay. It's going to get a little bit crazy. Or you can send everything to the reverb and the delay if you wish. Super great. Now, at the same time, you uh, have what it's called the master. So, of course, everything that co co happens right here, that goes on right here, comes out through the master. Now, the master, what you can do, you can add a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, overdrive, which is, you know, just a little bit of uh, saturation. Let me just do the playing. And listen to the kick. Maybe this kick. How different it is with the saturation. So again, you're just adding a little bit of saturation. You have some other modes that you can you can try if you wish. That was really aggressive. But yeah, you can add a little bit of saturation if you want just a little bit more. Now still, you can uh, do a little bit of EQing, actually a little bit of high passing. So whenever you enable cut, you can cut the, from the lows, cut from the highs. 
Now you have all the modes with this one. It's a little bit less aggressive. This one is much more aggressive. And the other one is going to do a tiny boost before cutting, which is, you know, good for the kicks because it's going to boost the lower kick, you know, the lower part of the, uh, of the kit and then just cut what we don't want below maybe 42 hertz. All right. Another thing that you get is the soft clipping. So this is a little bit of, you know, a little bit of clipping, saturation. And that's why you get the level right here. So let me just go here. So this is the meter for this plugin. I'm going to go up in level and I'm going to keep the soft clip. I'm maybe going to just turn it off for now. I'm going to go up. I'm going to go up. And notice I'm, I'm starting clipping, right? I'm clipping. Right. So the soft clip, of course, is going to do the limiting for you and it will introduce a little bit of saturation whenever you boost it like this. So you can force it to into saturation. But notice that we are not clipping on this track. It's clipping right here. That's the soft clipping. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. That's the kit. That's the effects. The soft clipping, the cutting, and the uh, a little bit of saturation that you get. Okay, so let's talk about the playback modes that you get right here. So by mistake, I changed. I changed that one. I don't want that one. I want something long. I want something that you know. Can... Right. So maybe. They were. Oh, I love that one. I'm gonna put it on the flex number two. All right. So that's the sound. Cool. So I'm going to go back uh, to edit and I'm going to show you how this works. So you have something called poly mode. You have something uh, called mute groups, which is, which is the choke group. I'm going to show you how that works. You can play it in reverse and then you can use as an output bus. We're going to cover all of this right now. So first is the poly mode. So let me uh, just give you an example. So if I do something like this and 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 I just, you know, do a solo and I play it. Notice that every time that we have a step right here is going to restart the sample, right? It's just starting it over and over and over and over again. By enabling the poly mode, what this does, it will just... It will not cut the sample. It will just, you know, keep adding it, adding it, adding and adding. That's what the poly mode, poly mode means. Right now it's choking it. You know, every time we just encounter a new step, and right now it's just not doing that. It's just, you know, letting it ring. So the other thing that you get, and let me just stop it because it's a little bit annoying. You, ha you have the choke groups. Let's say that, uh, let me just give you an example. And for now, I'm just going to go there, and maybe I'm going to add right here. So I know that this uh, sample is very, very long, right? So if I play this one and I play this one, this one is very long and it's going to last. And then we have the cowbell. So what if I want to choke? I want to stop this sound whenever something else plays. So what we can do, we can assign, uh, assign the different sounds to different groups. So I'm going to say that this one belongs to, me, to, uh, to the group number one and this one to the group number one. Can you see that? Can you can hear that? What, what's going on? So let me just stop it. Uh, so this one, of course, is very long and they belong to the same group. And this rule means that if another sample that belongs to the same group is playing while this one is still, you know, uh, on, is going to choke it. It's going to stop the playback right there. And that's what is happening. If I change it and put it in a different place, it's going to cut it right here. And this is called choke groups. And it's because we can maybe make me do, maybe do things like... Things like that, you know? So, what you get is the different choke groups. You get uh, four different groups. Or you can just say, no, no choke group at all. Uh, in this case, we you know with this sample, which is very long, uh, you know, you're going to need to uh, maybe edit the sample right here and just make it a little bit smaller. Uh, it depends on what you're doing. So... That uh, the, the playback, you know, that's the uh, the poly mode and the choke group. So then you have another thing, which is the reverse. 
And if I do it like this, it's going to play the sample in reverse. Right? Um, I feel like I don't need to do a lot of explaining, it's just doing it in reverse. Since the sample is very long, we can hear what's going on very clearly. Okay, so let me show you what the uh, what the what this is. This is the output bus, and this is something very, very, very useful. But this one, what it what it will do, it will uh, show or it will uh, output whatever lane to a bus. So let's say that you know this one is gonna go to I don't know. Let me just uh, let me just do something randomly. I'm gonna go to the clap, right? So or maybe the kick. So I'm gonna go and do the kick, and I'm gonna say, okay, so the kick is going to go to outpost, uh, to the bus number one, right? Notice it says number one. Now when I play this, notice that this kick is not audible. It's, uh, let me just mute this. This kick, we, we cannot hear it, and it's because this one is not going th uh, through the master, it's not going through here. It's only being outputted to bus number one. Now you can still go to a bus and master, so it means that you're going to hear it on the master, and it's going to the bus number one. Now, what is the point of doing all of this? Now, the main point is that, and let me just go to the bus number one. That depends on, uh, and this of course depends on the DAW that you're using. In this case, I'm using Bedwick. So if I go right here to the this, uh, you know, this place, notice that it says this plugin has multiple outputs. Now, uh, for example, if you're working on um, Studio One, it's just going to be a little bit different. It's very related. You still need to go to the virtual instrument and you will have the buses right there. On Bedwick, whenever you throw the plugin, you will get the chains right here. So you can manually add a chain or you can add the missing chains. You know, it's just, you know, you get it very easy on Bedwick. We're not just going to do this one. I'm just going to add a chain. And notice it says master one and two. So remember, we were outputting things to bus number one, the kick. Let me just open the plugin again. Oh, got that one. Let me open that one. And I'm gonna do the playing. And notice that we get something right here. So if I solo, this is the master. If I add a new chain, this is gonna be the bus number one. And notice what's, what's going on right here. We get the kick. So now everything else is going to be the you know the rest of the in, the, the rest of the uh, the kit and right here we have the kick, but we can go crazy and we can say you know what I'm going to go with this one and say this one is is number two, this one is number three, this one is number four and notice that you get an option right here that says <laughs> do it by default so it's going to do it but it's going to do it for you it's going to send everything. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, and eight. So now, right here, you can add it manually by adding a chain, or you can add missing chains. And you have the kick, you have the second kick, you have the snare on a different bus, and you know, and everything else. Very simple. Now, what's the benefit of doing this? So let's say that I want to uh, do a little bit of mixing, right? Maybe I like the kick, but I want to do something else. But again, this is a chain. Notice that whenever you click right here, at least on Bitwig, you could add some effects. So maybe I just want to do some a little bit of EQing to the whole sound. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of filter and just you just do whatever you want to do, you know, with your own plugins. Maybe something like that. Right? Maybe you want a little bit of saturation in some place, and I'm right now I'm just you know, I'm just, uh, it's gonna give you one more example and I'm just gonna move on. So, okay, let me just know which one is. You can rename this, right? So this is the uh, claps. Maybe I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, saturation there to the snares. And there you go. So now you can work with different buses and add different plugins and do your mixing right here. And maybe, you know, just you don't want to use whatever is right here, or maybe just, you know, compliment. It's that simple. All right. Okay, so maybe you don't like this way of working, right? Maybe you don't like to go through the master, or maybe you don't like to do the output buses. And that's fine. That's fine. I don't like it either. 
So what you can do, you can export whatever it is that you have right here on very different ways. And the way to export the sound is going to be this button right here. Now, there's one thing I missed, uh, you know, I just forgot to explain is that you can host it. Uh, you can sync it to the uh, to the tempo of your track. So now whenever you do play right here, it's going to start the playing. But if you start the playing on your track, it's synced to the tempo. And it's, if you stop it, it's just, you know, you just sync it, uh, syncing this to the tempo and to the, the to the playback. So, you know, pretty simple. Uh, if I go right here, it's going to give you different options of how to export this. And you can export this on very, very different ways. So first you get the raw kit. Right? Notice this is the raw, actually this is the raw sound. But at the same time, you can export the raw kit. If I drag and drop, I'm gonna go and put it there. And uh, let me just close it right here. Notice that for each single one is bringing me a sampler. But maybe I just don't want to do this. I don't want a sampler, just I'm gonna go and remove it. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do something like that. So we get the samples. And these are the raw samples, not the processed ones. So you don't get everything you do right here. You just don't get it. You just get the raw sound, right? So hopefully that's clear. So then of course you can get it like this if you wish, and then you just can, you know, do your mixing. Uh, what else can you do? Of course, uh, since you are doing a little bit of processing right here and you're going through a lot of things, uh, what you want to do is to process the sound. And every time you want to export it, you're going to need to render this to WAV. So this is going to be stored in a temp file, on a temp directory, and it will just pretty much, you know, do all the sounds for you. Notice it's just very silent. So this one is the process kit, and notice it's very different. You know, the volumes are different, the length is a little bit different, so everything's a little bit different. So notice again that everything is uh, a little bit silent. You know, it's just a little bit silent. What you can do, you can normalize the volume. So this one is gonna just, of course, make it a little bit louder, or you can max it out to the maximum uh, output uh, you know, volume that you can get right here. So I'm gonna go back to what we have before. Just gonna, you know, do the default for all. Uh, right here, gonna reset everything to master. Because uh, with the, whenever we do the stems, uh, this is gonna, kind of a, a get it from uh, from the master. So if we don't have a master, not everything is going through a different place, not through the master, uh, we are just not gonna get anything, right? So the stems are just, you know, nothing like we have right here. Now, if I go through the master, now we are gonna get stuff. So the stems are uh, pretty much the version with the sequence, you know, the sequence version of the sample. So if I go there and drop it, I can just mute this and play the track. And get it right maybe <laughs> of course it's a, it's a little bit too loud because we did this i'm gonna go and do that as well so i'm gonna go and delete it and do the same now it's a bit more normal or maybe we can do it we can even do off if we wanted to it's gonna be much silent but that's fine it's still gonna work and if i do the playback there you go you get the stem so you can work with that as well now what else do you get what else can you do so you can export the beat as web so, you, as you can see, you have uh, a lot of ways of exporting and working with this, right? It's very complete. It's just super complete. Now, the only thing that you get is the MIDI, the beat as MIDI. Uh, so, you can drag and drop and it will, you know, export the MIDI. Now, the cool thing is that since you get the processed sounds, what you can do, and I'm just going to do it because, you know, this uh, tutorial is super long, so... Uh, you can do, uh, you can bring your drum machine right here, right? So uh, I'm going to go and bring XO again. Since you have your sounds right there, what you can do is just drag and drop whatever you want. So I'm going to go and maybe drag, drag this one. Uh, this one is going to be the kick two. This one, snare. So now you have the different sounds on the sampler. Now, of course, it's going to sound a little bit different because we need to do the work on the sampler. Now we don't, you know, we don't have it easy anymore. Let me just go there and just do the looping. Now, notice that not everything, we, we just need to change the settings on the sampler just to fit whatever it is that we are doing. There you go, it's a little bit better on that one. Let me change that one. And there you go. 
Now we are just getting closer to what we had on XO. Again, just different ways of, of, of working. You can choose at the end of the day, you can just maybe create your beat right here on XO, just save it, you know, have it on a secure place and then just export it and work it the usual way. You know, what, what else? What else can you ask? So you can even, of course, export it if you wish. I'm not going to do it right now. But that's it. So let me just delete this and go back to XO. So the last thing we're going to talk about is going to be uh, the, uh, right here, the uh, library. Now, it's pretty simple. You get your favorites. Whenever you favorite something, let's go right here and say Avrakadavra. Oh, maybe Avrakadavra, whatever. I'm going to go to favorites. And it's going to show up right there. You have different, you know, sounds. And one thing, and, and I'm just going to show you because it's important. I'm going to go to our sound, all right? I'm going to go and save it. Uh, maybe I'm going to go and just change the kick. Right? I'm going to go to the space and say, you know what? I want a different kick. Maybe something like that. No, not that. All right, so I have a new kick. So of course we changed the preset. If I go to something else, it's not going to use this sounds. It's going to use its own sounds. And it's because, let me just stop it. And it's because all the presets that we get within the XLN, uh, you know, libraries and expansions and everything else, they are created to use uh, some very specific samples. So it doesn't matter that you go to your space, for example, you select whatever sample and then you lock it here, you know, it's just, you know, you lock it and say, oh, okay, so now it's locked and nothing can change it. No, if you just select a different, a different thing, it's just gonna, you know, it's just gonna change it. It's the way it works. There's no way of just choosing your samples and then going through the different presets of the core content and keeping your samples on the same place. I asked this and they told me that there was no way. Maybe they did an update, you know, and now you can, but you know, so far they told me, you know, you cannot do it. So on the preset right here, you can, you know, randomize and select something random. You can uh, toggle the XLN or toggle by user. And I guess that's everything about this plugin. If I'm, of course, forgetting something, just let me know down in the comments, all right? So then, of course, you can go to settings, right? So you can go to settings right here. You know, I'm going to leave that one to you, but that's all, you know? Hopefully you enjoyed this one, you learned something, you can use it as a guide, and now you know how to operate this beast. So, remember to like, subscribe, and see you on the next one.